Howdy folks, I'm Hardy Ham, hungrily hankering for humiliated herrings. I'm Amber. And here is more humiliated herring for us to hanker for. We're probably not very good ham. <laughs> Let's get started. We've gone bad. All right, folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for picking up my neighbor's lingerie? So there's this couple who lives across from me, as in our balconies face each other, on the floor above mine. Now, ever since they moved in, I've noticed that the wife tends to do their laundry typically on the same day, and she has her husband hang it out on their balcony to dry once it's finished. Now, I don't know if he's just ignorant or doesn't care, but he sort of just drapes the clothes over the railing rather than hanging them up properly. What ends up happening is that the smaller and thinner pieces of clothing like lingerie, bras and underwear and whatnot end up falling off the railing where the wind then carries them to my balcony. Even so, mistakes happen, so I take any that fall inside and make sure that they get properly dried and hold on to them until I can awkwardly return them next morning. The wife obviously is embarrassed but thankful towards me for not letting her lingerie get lost. Fast forward many months and this is still happening like clockwork on a weekly basis. Me and the wife are now pretty much on an unofficial schedule that she comes by my apartment to pick up the lingerie the morning after the laundry day. It doesn't matter how many times she tells her husband to fix the problem, it never changes. She works during the time that they need to be hanged so she can't do it herself. Now, after all this, I run into her husband one afternoon and he's annoyed with me. He didn't shout, more sharply worded, but he made his point clear. He doesn't like what I've been doing. I shouldn't be touching his wife's lingerie, let alone keeping it overnight in my apartment. According to him, me taking a married woman's intimate clothing is creepy and violating. And if I was really just returning it, I wouldn't keep it overnight and instead come to their apartment late at night and return it immediately. He also spent a while complaining that his wife was giving him a hard time for how he was hanging the clothes thanks to me calling it a jerk move on my part. I don't believe that I'm the jerk in this situation. I'm the one making up for his mistake and returning the lingerie to its owner at my earliest convenience, like a good neighbor should do. I get that it's very intimate, but I feel like I'm innocent here. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? No, not the jerk. I mean, what is the husband expecting you to do? Leave it out there to be blown away by the wind? You know? Um, so, I mean, next time, if he does this again, I would have a frank conversation with him. Be like, okay, I just won't touch it or I'll throw it in the trash. Like, because you having to go upstairs to return it is extra effort and energy on your part. And so be like, you can come down and get it from me immediately, or I can just leave it out there and let nature take its course. Like, what option do you want? Is your wife going to be any more happy if her laundry all flies off in the wind? Yeah, I mean, I wonder how many aren't salvaged, right? Mm -hmm. Because it sounds like this happens often enough that I'm sure not every piece of laundry actually gets, you know, saved by OP here. And I also am a little confused about how their balconies are set up here, but... I think that this is a actually a kind thing that OP is doing. I don't mm -hmm. think that this is a creepy or, you know, a jerk thing for them to do. I think that the husband needs to invest in a good set of clothes pins, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they're not that hard to use. Why isn't he pinning the clothes to the rack in order to make sure that they dry? So, I don't know. I don't feel like he... I think the husband is just annoyed that OP is, uh, you know, that his wife is on his case, right? Right, but OP not collecting her clothes won't fix anything. Like, it will just make the problem worse. Well, I think what he's saying is that he wants OP to return the clothes immediately. And why should OP have to constantly run up to wherever they are to return the clothes? I don't think that's a reasonable expectation. No. And I think then, again, like, the wife isn't mad at OP. Mm -hmm. She's mad at her husband so OP isn't the one who's doing anything wrong. It's the husband. Right. Well, he's blaming this on OP. Like, if OP just stopped, should stop blaming him. And it's like, no, dude, I think you're a little mixed up there. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about, should OP talk to the wife now about the husband's request? Yeah, I definitely think it should at least be uh, mentioned. And they could even, like, ask, you know, make sure the wife is comfortable and everything. It seems like she's fine. But, you know, just be like, hey, I just wanted to check with you. Your husband seems to think this is a problem. Is this, like, bothering you? Yeah. I mean, I think that would be a really good way to approach this, just so that OP can make sure that they're on the same page as the wife and make sure that 
she isn't complaining about this behind their back about like the clothes they, they don't like the fact that they have to go over to their house to pick up the clothes or something like that right though i think if that were the case then they would send their husband to get them mm -hmm. but let me know what you folks think so anyhow take care and good luck and M. Miggs says, not the jerk, going in their apartment and rummaging through her underwear drawer is creepy. Picking up her underwear when the wind blows it into your balcony is a neighborly act. If he doesn't want you to handle his wife's underclothes, then he needs to pig them out properly. This is all on him. And I. Loria says, perhaps he would prefer OP just throw away all the lingerie. I, I don't think that the wife would appreciate that. At no. that point in time, she, she would be getting punished for her husband's mistakes. Mm-hmm. And 30 ought 6 says, The only jerk that I can identify in this situation is the other lady's husband. I guess just throw everything that falls on your balcony either in the trash or over the rail, or donate it to Goodwill. That fellow sounds like an insufferable jerk. And Alley Cat 77777 says, Yes, I would throw it all off the balcony from now on, not the jerk. I think these folks are kind of focusing on the wrong problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, like, because the person who gets hurt all in all of this is the wife, you know, and... Uh, if OP feels comfortable, like, obviously if the husband was, like, being threatening or something yeah. like that, yeah, like, don't put your safety and well-being on the line for this, but if it's just a matter of him being a little snarky, you know, and you're fine with that, you know, then keep, talk to the wife, keep doing the status quo. Mm -hmm. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for telling my husband that his friend can't come to our house? I'm a 38-year-old female, and my husband is a 45-year-old male, and he has a lifelong friend. This friend royally messed us over financially. He tricked my husband into quitting his good-paying job, packing up our stuff, and moving with the promise that he could make money working for him. My husband did the work over a period of months and never got paid. His friend kept all their earnings, while my husband quite literally did all the work and even paid for some of the materials, plus used some of his own personal materials. Meanwhile, I had to work at a fast food job to keep our bills paid. I'm not above that, but I have an extensive administrative background with high paying jobs. But none of these jobs existed in this tiny town, so that's what I was stuck with. We eventually found out that this friend owed a lot of money to people, employees, friends, and family. He basically lives off of other people's money and labor, including his own wife whose paycheck gets directly deposited into his account, and she would complain to me that she doesn't even have money for gas. When people started chasing my husband for money, since he was now the face of the business, asking where his friend was, including the IRS, it became embarrassing and we finally moved away. Husband and I reconciled amazingly. It was a tough time for me, and I was often blamed for the situation, and even gaslit by his friend who told me that I was fat, ugly, greedy, and didn't understand how business worked. My husband only insisted on staying for so long because he wanted to live closer to his children from a previous marriage who happened to live there, so I understood his point of view and forgave him for putting us through that. Anyways, five years passed after this, and we never heard from this friend. Husband and I rebuilt our life and now run a successful business and also purchased a house. Guess I do know how business works after all. Huh. I was over it, at least until this friend creeped back into his life recently. He said that he was getting kicked out of his living space, made up some elaborate story, which I'm positive is just complete bull... <laughs> bull BS... <laughs> <laughs> made up some elaborate story, which I'm positive is just some BS. And I think that really, he just is in search of some place to go, and maybe he thought that he could get something out of my husband. My husband, thankfully, is not helping him there, but he wants to give him another chance to be friends. He wants to invite him to our house, have our children play together. And I'm left feeling like I have to relive this nightmare all over again. I want nothing to do with this person, and I absolutely cannot allow this person into my home or near my children. I don't even trust him not to physically steal things from our home. My husband is now blaming me for interfering with his friendship since I won't let him in the house. I said maybe you should blame your friend for his terrible behavior or get better friends. I didn't pick him, and he makes me uncomfortable. It's just too bad, in my opinion. But I'm being accused of being the bad guy. Deja vu. Of what the jerk put us through for all these years ago. Am I the jerk for wanting nothing to do with this person and making my husband's friendship difficult by not allowing him to come over? All right, folks, what do you think? No, not the jerk. And honestly, I would be making potentially like 
it grounds for divorce if he continues associating with this person. He completely messed you over before and tried to blame you for him not paying your husband and stealing money from people. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that your husband went, uh, went along with that and still wants to have anything to do with this man, it just baffles me. It does not show good judgment. Uh, and I would be worried about him having this man in your house, in your life. If your husband, you know, and you have a joint bank account, who has to stop husband from giving money to him when he comes up with his latest sob story you know um it just does not seem good at all you know there's a difference between being a good person and being a sucker right if op if your husband goes along with this then he's a sucker right like you know what this person's capable of you know what they're going to do this is, it's plain as day. Like, there's no surprises here. When somebody shows you who they are, you need to believe them. Yeah, maybe this guy deserves an, another chance somewhere, but he doesn't deserve another chance with you, mm -hmm. right? Fool me once, shame on me. You, fool me twice, shame on me, right? He is not a person who you can trust, and you know that you can't trust him. What happens when he weasels his way into your business next Right. Mm -hmm. And then starts, you know, embezzling funds away from the business because I can see that happening. I can see him being like convincing you that, oh, I need to I need a job. Can't I just come and start working here? And then, you know, blaming you for all the problems in the business and saying that we could do so much better if OP wasn't here, blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah, uh, I, that's the exact kind of thing. Like if he was genuinely remorseful. He would have apologized. He would have tried to make amends. He would have yeah. found ways to repay the people who had wronged him. Yeah. But instead, he's just going back to his old tricks of, oh, look at OP ruining things for us. Yeah, I, I think that OP, you need to lay it out plain as day that if he wants to have a relationship with his friend that you are not interested in a relationship with your husband yes like, and make sure to safeguard your finances where he can't touch them yeah it's because at this point in time this isn't that you you should not have to go down with this ship plain and simple but let me know what you folks think so anyhow take care and good luck and damama 3b says do not even let him into pee. He and hubby and kids can meet at a park or skate rink or an arcade or something. The way that he talked about you was horrible and unacceptable and non-negotiable. This is all on the friend. I use that term very loosely. And OP replies, no, he and hubby can meet. My kids will not even be allowed anywhere near that person, not even at a park. Good for OP. Yeah, but honestly, I think husband also, like, cannot be around him or OP needs to be away from then kids need to be away from husband and disastrous gate 5559 says if you're still okay with any contact let alone friendship to be had with this man then you actually have not learned a single thing and OP replies what makes you think that I'm okay with it I'm not but what am I going to do chain my husband down and prevent him from leaving the house the alternative is divorce and I'm not sure if I want to throw away my entire life and kids lives over this that's a really challenging situation. It is, but like at a minimum, make sure you have money that your husband cannot access when this ship goes down. Um, I see this going very badly. Yeah. All right, folks. And our next letter is titled, I overheard my daughter's teacher and it changed my mindset. So last week, I went to pick up my daughter from her elementary school a bit early. While I was waiting near her classroom, I overheard her teacher discussing how they involve students in resolving conflicts on the playground. She said something around the lines of, instead of punishing, we teach them to understand the other person's feelings and find a common ground. It hit me hard because I've always approached disagreements at home with ultimatums and immediate resolutions, thinking that it's more efficient. This small insight made me rethink about how I deal with conflicts in my own family. I started trying to understand my partner's perspective more deeply instead of just jumping to conclusions. It's only been a week, but the dynamic at home feels different, lighter somehow. The more I practice patience and empathy, the more I've noticed my family opening up too. It hasn't fixed everything immediately, but it feels like we're on a more understanding path now. I guess I just wanted to share this because sometimes these little moments or overheard conversations can alter our approach to significant aspects of life. I'm curious if others have had similar revelations from unexpected situations and how it affected them long term. Thanks for letting me share. All right, folks, what do you think? I mean, I think that's really good that OP was able to have this revel revelation. Um, and I do think that 
communication and trying to understand other people's feelings is a very important process of the conflict resolution process. Yeah, I mean, I think so as well. I, I think that oftentimes we approach things, can approach things very selfishly, or some, some people can approach things very selfishly without thinking about what the other person needs or what, what is going on in their life, right? I mean, you know, the expression, walk a, you know, a thousand miles in someone else's shoes, right? And I think sometimes you do need to put yourself in someone else's shoes to kind of understand why they're upset about something and why they might be frustrated about something and what you can do on your part to help alleviate that stress, right? Now, I mean, certainly if it's like something that is their own problem, then that is, you know, something for them to work through. But if this is, you know, something where there's some chore or something like that around the house and you can't understand why, you know, X, Y, or Z, if you put some yourself in their shoes and try to understand like why they're asking or why they're doing something, it can probably help to understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some tea right here, and Amber, she has a joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? Woo. Woo hoo. What a great time to be alive. Don't get too excited. I was just telling a joke. Oh, clearly, clearly. And I have Earl Grey. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy spectacular Saturday, folks. I hope your Saturday is off to a spectacular start. Amber, we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance, and please have it about bad friends. If your friend scams you, they are not your friend. Do not trust them. Yeah. I mean, I think that really can go a lot further, right? If there is someone in your life who is mean, degrading, bullying, and not a very nice person, you don't have to keep them in your life as a friend. You can get rid of them. You can free yourself of their toxicity at any point in time that you want. Well, and they're not even a friend. Like, yeah. you, may, you may care about them as a friend. They don't care about you. That's not reciprocated. Exactly. But thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.